In August 1934, the British negotiated the use of the Azores, citing a treaty of peace that they had signed with the Portuguese hundreds of years earlier. This opened the doors for Allied forces to maximize the strategic potential of the Azores to defeat the Germans. Within two weeks of arrival, the skies over the Azores were filled with aircraft including Hudson's, Lancaster's, Flying Fortresses, York's, and Wellington's, with the primary mission of defeating the daunting German submarines, also known as U-boats. On December 9, 1943, the United States began to utilize Lodge's Field as more than just a supply hub, as the first American aircraft, a B-17 bomber, was ferried through Lodge's Field. By the end of 1944, 1,900 American aircraft had passed through Lodges. The impact of Lodges Field is best described by this statistic. In 1942, 5.4 million tons of shipping had been lost in the North Atlantic Ocean. In the last quarter of 1943, only 146,000 tons of shipping were lost. The tide was turning in World War II's battle for superiority in the Atlantic, largely as a result of the Allied Powers' operations at Lodges Field. Furthermore, November 9, 1943 was the first U-boat kill, which began a campaign resulting in 53 sunken submarines. This proved to be the turning point in the Battle of the Atlantic. The unique history of Lodges Field continues through the role that Lodges has played in Operation Vittles, better known as the Berlin Airlift in the late 1940s. From June to September 1948, the United States and Britain airlifted supplies into Germany as a part of the Berlin Airlift. During this time, more than 3,000 aircraft, including DC-47s, DC-4s, and C-54s, transited through Lodges en route to Berlin. As personnel and air crews returned from airlift duties, they found Lodges building and base agencies prepared to receive them 24 hours a day. In keeping with the legacy of excellence at Lodges, aircraft maintenance crews were noted for a quick turnaround in making repairs and obtaining parts. Therefore, it's easy to see the beginnings of what we now call Lodge's goodness. In September 1951, with the United States seeking a continued presence in the Azores and the Portuguese support for their plans, the United States and the Portuguese government announced a treaty concerning the use of Lodge's field. They agreed upon the home of American military operations in the Azores. This treaty has been the basis for all Lodges Field agreements since the 50s. The 1960s in the Azores saw an emergency situation affecting Portuguese supply ships that American forces at Lodges Field assisted with. Six weeks of severe wind prevented Portuguese supply ships from reaching the island of Santa Maria in 1963. The 1605th Air Base Wing coordinated to divert a C-124 aircraft to Lages, where it was loaded with five tons of food, which was then airdropped to Santa Maria. This humanitarian operation allowed the residents of Santa Maria to survive until the next shipments were able to arrive. United States presidents visited Lages Field on three separate occasions during the 1970s. In 71, President Richard Nixon and the Portuguese Prime Minister met with France's president, who arrived at Lodges in style aboard a French Concorde jet. During his visit, President Nixon stayed in the Wing Commander's house, the same house that Colonel Bargery and his family now live in. Three years later, President Nixon returned to Lodges Field on his way back from a trip to the Middle East. Later in 79, President Jimmy Carter and his staff stopped by Lodges Field to refuel en route to the Middle East. Unfortunately, the 1970s also saw a tragedy at Lodges Field. In early September 1976, a Venezuelan C-130 crashed at night in the village of Lodges. There were 68 fatalities, including crew members and passengers. Tragedy struck just one year later as well, when a Navy P-3 Orion aircraft assigned to Lodges Field crashed in the Canary Islands, killing all 13 aboard the aircraft. In other extraordinary news about Lodges Field during the 1970s, Weather observers at the base recorded the first officially confirmed tornado in the history of Lodges Field. They sighted a funnel cloud touching down on the top of Praia Ridge. Luckily, no damage was reported at the base. On New Year's Day, 1980, tragedy struck Tercera. As people rang in the new year, an earthquake measuring 7.0 struck the island. Although the base was not damaged, local communities were devastated. Surrounding communities saw over 20,000 people left homeless and tragically, 50 deaths were attributed to the earthquake. 
In an attempt to assist our Portuguese host, service members at Lodges Field provided aid and support to the local communities. The 80s saw a rise to many of the base facilities as we recognize today. In 1981, the Lodges Field Gymnasium was rededicated as the Carlton Chase Gymnasium in honor of Master Sergeant Carlton Chase. Ocean View Softball Field and Barramar Housing were opened in 1984 and Lodges Firefighters dedicated a new station house a year later in 1985. In 1988, the Chase Fitness Center was renovated once again and one year later, the Lodges Field Commissary, a $5.5 million facility, was opened. A few years later, our beloved Top of the Rock Club was opened as a consolidated officer and NCO club. The 80s undoubtedly saw rise to many of the structures that now make Lodges Field home. On the warfighting front, the 90s were busy at Lodges Field. On January 17, 1991, Desert Storm opened with a massive bombing campaign against Iraq. On that day alone, 90 aircraft transited Lodges Field. To support airlift, Strategic Air Command staged a provisional tanker wing at Lodges with 33 tankers and 600 personnel. At one point during Desert Storm, there were 56 aircraft on Lodges' ramp. In a testament to flexibility and dedication to mission, not a single aircraft was refused landing, servicing, or refueling despite the high ops tempo. During the Gulf War, Lodges Field supported more than 12,000 aircraft operations. Among notable visits during the 90s at Lodges Field included the First Lady of the United States, Hillary Clinton, in 1997. As the new millennium approached, a new set of challenges faced the world as the events of September 11th shaped military operations. As the United States responded to terrorist attacks and the threat presented by Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda, Lodges Field again proved invaluable to the United States and its allies. As the global war on terror progressed, Lodges Field was home to the Atlantic Summit hosted by the Portuguese Prime Minister, José Barroso. The summit was attended by President George W. Bush, the British Prime Minister, and the Spanish Prime Minister. The four leaders met to discuss military operations in the summit room in the top of the Rock Club, which is the namesake for the room to this day. Lodges Airmen support combat and contingency ops each day from deployed locations around the globe. Just as importantly each day, from our joint base, Lodges Airmen support humanitarian, combat, and contingency operations in UCOM, AFRICOM, and CENTCOM as evidenced by the dozens of warfighters, fighter jets, and airlifters that have come through the base within the last week alone. As further evidence of Lodges Field's continued importance to the Air Force and our allies, consider the following facts, for which the 65th Air Base Wing was recognized with the Outstanding Unit Award from October 2010 to June 2012. As the world's only mid-Atlantic airfield, the wing managed airfield operations for 45 Coronet fighter packages and more than 1.9 thousand combat aircraft, enabling combatant commanders and overseas contingency operations. Also, the wing executed a $7.1 million resurfacing project while ensuring uninterrupted operations throughout the project. Finally, the wing earned an excellent rating during both the United States Air Forces and Europe's Health Services Inspection and the first ever combined operational readiness and limited compliance inspection with the core mission of Lodges, bedding down incoming forces. This earned the wing an unprecedented, outstanding rating by the 2012 Inspector General team. Since the beginning of Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom, and then New Dawn, Lodges Field has supported over 1,300 U.S. fighter missions, 4,000 tanker, and airlift missions and 3,000 Allied aircraft missions. As Operation Enduring Freedom continues and other operations have taken place in the recent years, it's evident that Lodges Field is still in the fight.